Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is React Top 100 Interview Questions and Answers with Detailed Code Walkthrough and Examples. I am covering everything that you need to crack that React interview from basic to advanced concepts. This is part 3 of the series. If you have missed out on the first awesome two parts, make sure that you check them out. Let's get started. Alright, so we left at 38 questions in the first two parts. This is starting from 39. What are the benefits of using React Router? React Router is a popular library for handling routing in React applications. It provides a declarative way to define routes and navigate between different views. Some benefits of using React Router include code splitting, nested routes, route-based code splitting, easy to interaction and integration with other React components. Explain the concept of memoization in React. Memoization is the process of caching the result of expensive function calls and returning the cached result when the same input occurs again. That means when you have a fixed set of data input, you do some calculation part and it remains as it is in the memory in the cache. Next time when you have the same set of input data, that value is not recalculated, instead returned from the cache. In React, memoization can be achieved using the use memo or use callback hooks to optimize the performance by avoiding unnecessary re-renders or recalculations. The next question is, what is the purpose of use state hook in React? The use state hook is mostly common, most commonly used hook I would say. It is used to add state to functional components in React. It returns a stateful value and a function to update that value, which allows us to manage the state without writing a class component. Now take a look here. You import the use state from React and we have a function which a functional component which is counter. To define and use state, you will define const variable name followed by set followed by that name equal to use state 0. That means initial value is 0. When the user clicks on this button, we are saying set count is count plus 1. So it will increment the initial value and set the new value using set count. That's how you use use state hook. How do you perform AJAX requests in React? AJAX, re AJAX request in React can be for performed using the fetch API or any other third party libraries like Axios, etc. If you want to use, you can use use effect and inside the use effect, once the component is loaded asynchronously, it will make a fetch call to this API and then return the response and then you can do error handling, etc. So basically, when somebody asks you how do you perform the asynchronous API requests or calls, you can mention that we'll be using the fetch API or any other third party library like Axios. What is the purpose of use effect hook in React? The use effect hook is used to perform side effects in com functional components. It's similar to lifecycle methods in class components and allows us to execute code in response to component mounts, updates and unmounts. Every time some co thing changes in the component, use effect will be called automatically. What is the difference between use effect and use layout effect hooks in React? The use effect hook runs asynchronously after the DOM has been updated, while the use layout effect hook runs synchronously after all the DOM mutations. So remember the important difference is use effect hook runs asynchronously and use layout effect runs synchronously. In most cases you should use use effect. Okay, But let's say in some cases you might want to dynamically calculate the height, width or some positioning of an element. That's where you will use use layout effect. How do you optimize performance in React using memoization? Memoization in React can be achieved using use memo or use callback hooks. They memo memoize the results of expensive computations or functions, preventing unnecessary re-renders or recalculations, which overall improves the performance. 
explain the concept of pure component in react pure component is a class component provided by react that implements should component update with a shallow prop and state comparison that means it will not um, it will not unnecessarily re-render by automatically performing shallow comparison of props and state right so if the state changes if the prop changes if the value is same it will not change that's what is called as a pure component in react class components what is the purpose of create context function in react the create context function is used to create a react context which provides a way to pass data from component tree without having to pass props to all the multiple child components which means this is like a global thing which you can have it in one place and can be used in all the components it consists of two main components provider and consumer so provider is nothing but what is inside the context and consumer is the one that is consuming that value in that can be multiple components how do you handle routing in react applications routing in react applications can be handled using libraries such as react router that's the one of the most commonly used library react router allows us to declarative way of defining routes and navigating between different views in a single page application what are control components in react control components are nothing but they are the form elements whose value is controlled by react state okay that means their value is set by the state and updated through event handlers ensuring that react is the single source of truth for the component state so any component who, which is controlled by react state changes that is what we call it as a controlled component what is the purpose of forward ref function in react the forward ref function is used to forward refs from a child component to a dom element or a class component passed as props it allows components to pass refs through intermediate components without breaking the components encapsulation <coughs> now what this essentially means in simple terms is that let's say um, you have it you have a ref in ch from a child component you want to pass it to a class component as a prop right that's where you can use something like forward ref and you can pass the props and reference and you are returning input ref the same reference that was passed right so what it does is that it will help us pass through multiple components without breaking the hierarchy that's where forward ref is used if you want to learn more about it please do check out my react tutorial playlist i'm covering all of this in detail what is the purpose of react dot strict mode component in react the react.strict mode component is used to enable strict mode which performs additional checks and warnings to help us identify potential problems in the application it's especially helpful especially when you're working with legacy life cycles or any other let's say deprecated methods etc so always run your application on react.strict mode component wise what is the purpose of use context hook in react the, like i mentioned earlier also the use context hook is used to consume values from react con context without nesting multiple components so take an example here first you will create um, a context using react dot create context you can use that and say use context and pass the name of the context in the consumer that is so this is the provider this is the consumer which is consuming that value you don't have to pass this as props these are available globally what is the purpose of use reducer hook in react the use reducer hook is, is used to manage complex state logic in functional components it's an alternative to use state i think i have covered already this in part one where i've given you a code example also so make sure that you go through that you'll understand how uh, actions are defined how dispatches work and how you can manipulate the data but in short use reducer is used for managing complex states and it's an alternative to use state which is pretty straightforward but with use reducer you can define various actions and dispatch those actions on user actions what is the purpose of react.memo function in react 
the react.memo function is a higher order component used to memoize the results of a functional component. By this, it means that whenever the input is same, it will automatically return the same without recalculation or re-rendering. What is the purpose of react.fragment component in React? React fragment component is used to group multiple child um, elements without adding extra nodes like DOM. Either you can write react.fragment or just leave it empty. Right? It's similar to using empty angle brackets. Right? So when you use empty angle brackets, it's as good as you're using a react.fragment internally. What are the differences between Redux and Context API for state management? Redux is a state management library that provides a centralized store and actions for updating state. Whereas Context API is a feature of React that provides a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass props manually at each level. Now, Redux is like you are storing a state in global way, whereas context can be created for a particular functionality in the application. Like I explained earlier, it can be used for say authentication, token management, theme management, personal settings, etc. Redux is typically used for very large scale applications which has very, very complex state logic. Whereas context APIs are much simpler, um, I think um, I think most applications can work with context APIs unless your application is a major enterprise application. That's where Redux should be used or else Redux is an overkill to use. <coughs> How do you handle authentication in React applications? Now you can handle authentication in multiple ways, right? There are so many different ways, but if you have to mention, mention few like uh, JWT, which is uh, JSON web tokens. You can use session cookies. You can use OAuth. You can use a uh, third party uh, providers like Firebase, AuthO or Okta, etc. Right? So there are different ways of handling authentication. There is no one right or correct way of doing it. All right, this is part end of part three. I'll continue with part four in the next episode. Make sure that you go through this five part series in order to learn, master and crack that React interview. Also make sure that you go through the React tutorial playlist to learn React end to end. Thank you so much for joining in this episode. I'll see you in part four. Thank you so much for joining. Keep learning, keep growing. Join me in the next episode. Thank you.